Okay, family, family right. Yeah, I'll let you say, Rod. It's okay. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna have another go at preaching. So we've already, I've already done one, one go at preaching. Yeah, but it but might not upload. So well, well, it will, it will upload. But it was, it, land, it landed on 13 minutes, and if I upload that now. I can't use the internet yeah. and it won't upload for hours and yeah. hours and I can't use the internet so I'll do it when I get home. Okay. But he's done a good he's doing a good job already on, gonna, on this. He's gonna do it try. again. So thank you family, I hope you follow my message. Right, listen, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. your prayers. Yeah, I'm gonna be handing out some of these. Okay. It doesn't seem obvious. Well you have to review and renounce the claim Satan has on your soul. We're here today to give good news, and the good news is the message of the gospel, the message of how your soul can be saved for eternity. It's not a condemning message, we're simply telling you how to win, how to gain eternal life. There is only one way. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. There is no other way. It's a free gift. In Romans 6.23, it says, the gift of God is eternal life. It's a free gift. It's already happened on the cross. You just need to lay hold of it. Let's go back to the beginning for just one moment. Genesis 1 says, God created the heavens and the earth. It's clear there was a creator. The world shows his visible quality. Imperfection, the way he created everything. Genesis 2, God created Adam and Eve, they were the first humans. But unfortunately, they fell into sin. They disobeyed God and were deceived by the devil into knowing the knowledge of evil, the knowledge of sin. And it's clear that he wanted Satan wanted to destroy mankind. The Garden of Eden was man's original dwelling place and he was perfect. Satan you to come down and destroy it and unfortunately Satan is in control of the world as we speak 1 John 5 19 says the God of this world has everyone under his control the God of this world unfortunately is Satan we have to rebuke and renounce the claim he has on our soul and the good news is that's done through Lord Jesus Christ he already did it on the cross 2 Corinthians 4 says the God of this world has blinded the minds of them that believe not. You have to ask yourself, could have you been deceived? Were your suspicions confirmed? Was the devil real? Unfortunately, the answer is yes. He's behind the scenes, behind the veil, trying to take as many souls to hell as he can. Ephesians 6 12 says we do not wrestle against flesh and blood against spiritual forces of darkness. Well, that's Satan and his army behind the scenes. It's clear he's infiltrated our leaders, governments and nations. It's clear his plans are to distract you from the grace of our Lord God and sending Jesus down to save us. There's no way to be saved. You cannot be saved through works. Remember, it's already happened on the cross. Jesus did it all. Ephesians 2 says you've been saved by grace, it's a gift of God. Jesus knew that only his blood would atone for the sins of humanity. You may be familiar with the Old Testament where animals were sacrificed for the sins of the people. What this means is Jesus knew that only his blood would atone for the sins of humanity. He bore all the sins of humanity in his body like an animal in the Old Testament and shed his blood so we could be saved. Without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sins. Revelation 1, 5 says, unto him in the wilderness and wash this mark in with his blood. You have to believe this to comprehend, to be saved. Romans 5, 8, 9 says, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This means, unfortunately, we were all born into sin. We have to renounce, revoke the claim Satan has on the soul. We can do this by our blessed Savior, Lord Jesus. Believe that Jesus rose from the dead after three days. The surest he was God and was divine. He rose again for all of humanity so we could be saved. Believe that. Believe he 
rose from the dead. Believe in your heart that God rose him from the dead. The same power will then live in you with the Holy Spirit and you are sealed forever. You are safe and sealed forever. Believe what Jesus did. Believe he shed his blood for your sins and you gain the Holy Spirit and you are safe and sealed forever with the Holy Spirit. You get to live in eternity. Thank you. Hallelujah. We're okay, we're okay, we're okay. Yes. Yes. What our brother says is very true. Exactly true. There's only one name under heaven given to us by which we must be saved. Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Jesus said, I am the door. By me, if any man shall enter in, shall be saved. He will go in and out and find pasture. The thief is Satan, the god of this age, the devil. He's a liar, the father of lies. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So please, if you're, if you're in Jesus Christ, he cannot touch you. He has no legal right to your soul. Once you're saved, the devil has no legal right to your soul. You belong to God. Once you're saved, God has bought you with his own precious blood. That was God on the cross, the Son of God, who died for us to shed his blood for the forgiveness of our lifetime of sin. That means your past and your present and your future sin. He was buried and on the third day he rose again from the dead. And just by believing this in your heart and calling upon Jesus, you'll be saved. It's as simple as that. I don't know if the churches are telling you, but the Lord Jesus Christ is coming. Just like it says in the Holy Bible, any second, and the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God. And he's going to gather up into heaven all who have ever believed on him in the rapture. Harpazo. This is going to happen at any moment. And if you're not saved, if you haven't believed on Jesus, you will be left behind to face the worst time. Jesus said it will be a time so terrible that there's never been a time like it. There never will be again. Jesus said that men's hearts are going to faint from fear when they see what is coming upon this world. And this is why we are here, to lead you and tell you how easy it is for you to be saved just by believing on Jesus' sacrifice on the cross for all our sin, so that you won't be here for this apocalypse period. Seven years, Jacob's trouble, Daniel's 70th week, Revelation, the great tribulation. Seven years it's going to be when God is going to pour out his wrath and his judgments upon an unbelieving and unrepenting world which refuses to acknowledge the Lord our God who made the heavens, the earth, the sea and all that is in them. So let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and unto our God because he will abundantly pardon. Return to the Lord your God by believing the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ and you will be saved. This is your eternity. You are made in the image of God which means you have an eternal spirit and soul inside you. And your decision to accept or reject the Lord Jesus Christ will determine if you spend eternity in heaven, the most beautiful place you can imagine, or in hell, in outer darkness, weeping and wailing for eternity. We don't want you to, to end up in hell. Of course we don't. Neither does God. God wants none to perish. The Bible says that God, he loves his creation. He wants all to be saved. The Bible says that all can be saved. And it's not about being religious. Your salvation has got nothing to do with going to church every Sunday. If you can find a good church, then that's fine. But no, your salvation simply comes when you repent. 
change your mind from your unbelief and believe the good news that Jesus, he died in our place on the cross to shed his blood for the forgiveness of our lifetime of sin according to the scriptures. And he was buried and he rose again from the dead on the third day according to the scriptures. And when you believe this in your heart, call upon Jesus and you will be saved. Time is running out. Please believe before it's too late. Right, stop now then. Start a new one. In fact, I'm getting, I'm getting very tired actually. Uh, so sit, just see. I, in fact, I might just call this the last one. But uh, I've got Rob's uh, video as well to upload. Oh no, it's this one. It's this one, of course it is. He started off and I finished. All right. Um, yeah, I'm feeling a bit weary, but uh, thanks to your prayers, I think it's what's kept me going. And Rob. So, so Rob, I'm thinking. What time is it now? Hold on, hold on. Right, yes, I, I think it's best for me to, to start heading heading home. You know, I've been here for like yeah, yeah, nearly four yeah. hours that'll now. Go, that'll short, it'll look load easier. Yeah, okay. All right then, so we love you family. We love you so much. And once again, thank you for all your prayers. Thank you so much. Thank you for your support. We won't be able to do this without you. you know, we love you, but moreover, Jesus Christ loves you. Okay. The best friend you've got for eternity, Jesus Christ. He'll never leave you, he'll never forsake you, and that means he won't leave us here, he won't forsake us here. It's a pre-tribulation rapture when you rightly divide the word of God, and it'll give you so much more peace. If you're a post-tribber, just look into it a little bit more, and you'll see, and it'll give you so much peace. You, what, you stop your prepping and all that a lot, and realize you're going up before it all starts, of course. Right. Okay then Rob. Okay. Okay, we'll see you next time then. See you. See, see you guys. Alright, bye bye.